Greetings folks, Cross Train here coming to you today from a new game called City Skylines. Uh, it's a relatively recently released game and for me uh, it introduces me to a totally new genre of games, the city builder, the city management kinds of games. The closest I've probably played to it, for those of you that have followed my channel, is something like Banished. And um, but this is far more intricate. Uh, obviously, it's a it's a modern take, and the management of the city is much more intricate than it is in something like Banished. So, um, in fact, for those of you who have uh, or follow my YouTube channel, you will note that the name of this city when I uh, started doing it several days ago uh, is called Wordy Dirty. So it's my revisit to. My first big build and banished, in fact. So I just kind of, in my mind, played that it was a modernized version. It was the same city, kind of modernized. So I just uh, intend for this video to be kind of an introduction uh, to my play in this game. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the things I've learned. And, and uh, really, uh, this will be the only take we'll get from this city. Uh, that's my plan, anyways. Because my hope is that uh, in the next day or so, I will start a totally new city and take some of the things I learned from this game and uh, put them into play. And I'll, tr I'll t talk you through some of those things that I'm talking about here uh, briefly. So I'm going to uh, get this rolling. This really is, this game has just absolutely got me uh, mesmerized right now. So um, you start with nothing. Uh, you start with this highway right here. This is the uh, main highway in this city and so you've got this highway going through uh, a countryside that has nothing in it as you can see as I panoramic now you can see that I've got quite the layout um, uh, at least the beginnings of a layout of a relatively large city interestingly my population is just 81,202 people um, and this this has the looks of a city that's Oh, jeez, uh, four or five times that in, in terms of uh, population. I live in a city of eh, about 50,000, and this is not where I live. <laughs> so regardless of the scale, the scope of scale, that's, that's kind of uh, it's one of the interesting things. So I started here. Uh, right here was the initial uh, access point for me from the highway. So the highway is here and it gave me an access off of this. I've since changed a little bit um, and uh, no, actually my access was right here. Uh, and they give you access that ended right here. So then you had to start from there and, and go. So my initial development in this town was right here What in what I have taken to calling spruce hills. You can actually rename all of these um, these little uh, places here. So this is a what they call a uh, district in the game. Uh, and this is a manufacturing district that I have set up. Uh, it's set up for, uh, it's rich in resources. If you look over here, the resources, that green tells you that I've got great forest resources there. So, so I've got a little um, industrial area set up there. Immediately, I began to set that up in game, but I also had to take this road across the city. So I built this bridge early on and began my uh, residential setup over here. It's obviously expanded significantly since the beginning. It was very humble beginnings. You have zero citizens when you start and you have to do something to bring people down. So. Again, I'm not going to get real detailed with this, but this was, um, it started as uh, some commercial, some residential, and again, I had some industrial sitting over there in Spruce Hills, and uh, and it, it kind of expanded from there. As things grow, uh, there's a lot of stuff you have to manage about your city, but today, uh, this uh, initial establishment, if we zoom right in here, is a bustling city uh, with high-rise office space um, which is over right down this main alleyway right here uh, this main drive uh, is mostly uh, high-rise office space uh, the residential piece of this portion of the city is over here 
So this is all residential neighborhoods. Um, all of these uh, buildings here are residences. A couple nice little parks in my residence. Um, I have a skate skate park around here somewhere. Let's see if I can find. Oh, there it is. I got a couple of these in the city, but there's a skate park um, here in uh, in the heart of my city that you know people come out and hang out at. Yeah, in fact, there's somebody right there. Who is that? That's Olivia Finch, who uh, resides in the Poplar residence, works at the uh, com new commercial center, so wherever the heck those are. Uh, but anyway, so there, um, this is a residential part of my city. My next expansion here uh, went down this way to this point, and this was going to be my original uh, large piece of the city. This, again, out on the point here is all residential. And then some of the many things I've learned is I had a lot of uh, commercial behind it as well as um, uh, some office space. But this is almost now entirely office um, work. And then I eventually expanded over to here. And again, I have a very large uh, residential out on the point. Um, then almost all commercial um, and office space back in here and then again this expansion here is almost completely residential with some office ringing it so everything that you see down here this is all residential so and you can see the busy alleyways and all that kind of stuff um, I love this that you can zip through your, your city streets but anyway so this is all residential and this is again where I will be expanding uh, this next you can see I've got a lot of open space to continue the expansion of all of that so um, I've got a harbor over here for ships uh, so this brings in cargo for my city and uh, there's rail lines that come into the city here's a rail line that comes in from off the map that line is the map uh, edge uh, until you buy more tiles but these trains right now for example uh, let me pause it for a second capture this train if you click on it you can see that the owner of this is the city of Rockfield wherever that is somewhere off the map and they are transporting cargo they're 33 percent full to our circle um, this is circle business district cargo terminal so um, check this out one of my favorite things to do I'm going to follow uh, this train to its destination. So if I, I'm going to just kind of back up a little bit, <coughs> unpause it, and we can just follow this train um, into its destination place. Uh, and you can, so this is the original rail line right here. All of the spurs that come off of this uh, are spurs that I've created, like this one goes into my um, residential or my what I called the circle business district that's the triangle business or that's the triangle um, cargo hub but here we're coming into the circle uh, business district and he's gonna come in and he's just gonna simply unload his and now uh, pauses for a second okay he's gonna unload um, here at the terminal and then you'll watch all of these trucks and cars and all that stuff will take the stuff from here and deliver it out. Um, so you watch as, as it unloads and it goes away. Yeah, that's one of the interesting things about that. But all of these trucks, now these trucks are coming out and delivering goods to, um, to somebody. So again, here's a truck owned by this cargo terminal. He's importing forestry products to the Planks for Life. Uh, and he's 100% full load. So again, I can click on this. I can say, let's follow him to Planks for Life. And start it again. And let's, uh, again, we'll just kind of follow him and see where he's taking our goods that we just brought in on train. So there is so much about this game like traffic for example you see that we're stuck in a little bit of traffic although this is not bad I've done a lot to open up my traffic um, I still get a lot of work to do I learned an awful lot during this that I will uh, definitely improve upon in my next build
but uh, I love this aspect of <laughs> the game where you can kind of watch your city work. Um, so, whoa, there's a nice collision of nothing. So there you go. He just pulled in. Oh, no, that's one guy just pulled into this uh, and, and unloaded his load. Um, my guy's still going, so wherever Planks for Life is, we will find out short enough because we're in an industrial district right now that has some forest. Uh, again, this has this is Forest Heights industrial area here, so we've got some more um, forestry kinds of businesses. So there you go. You see him pull in. Uh, he will uh, unload some. He only unloaded part of it, and then he's delivering the rest to pellet fuels. Uh, so wherever pellet fuel, that's very interesting. That's actually the first time I've seen that. He didn't fully unload. He had part of his load was for um, planks for life, and 31% of his load is for pellet fuels, wherever that is. So I assume he is now going to pellet fuels and going to unload. There you go. He unloaded the rest of his load there at pellet fuels. So he is now returning to uh, his facility, which is a circle business district. So he'll just do that all day long. Just uh, just deliver stuff that's brought in. And that is absolutely critical in this game. So um, the delivery of goods to um, manufacturers, to commercial centers, to industrial and from industrial, to your shipping ports, to your train yards, um, all of that kind of stuff is absolutely critical. I built, in fact, partway through my game, I built this kind of, this raised highway here um, that you'll notice um, starts over here near the cargo ship. You can see a cargo ship coming in. Same thing will happen here as soon as this cargo ship docks. You'll see a whole bunch of trucks and vans and stuff pulling out of the, uh, the cargo yard and they're going to deliver their goods right now. So you build these cargo ships to bring in um, uh, goods and materials and, and export stuff from, from the your industrial yards that you're making. So anyways, I one of the problems was all of these trucks all over the city and they were just clogging up city lanes and traffic and blah, blah, blah. So I created this uh, raised highway here that basically has only exits at the high uh, commercial district. So this one exits right next to um, Triangle. This is another uh, train cargo uh, terminal. So this one exits right next to that. It goes on and it comes over here into the, this is almost completely a commercial district right here. Uh, in fact, this is completely commercial. Uh, so it, they come off here and deliver goods here and then it continues on to the other side of the map it runs past uh, a double cargo area I've got an industrial area here so these guys uh, can deliver goods up here it also exits in this little sleepy suburb right here which also has a commercial district and then it continues on through the other edge of the map um, and uh, dumps off right here on this kind of the outer edge of the map in uh, folks get an idea where I live near where I live here this is Purdue Ag Agriculture Park here um, all forestry stuff because it's very rich in forestry so those of you from understand or know Purdue University and Lafayette West Lafayette Indiana uh, don't live too terribly far from there uh, so I thought I'd honor Purdue with with uh, with that so you can see doing a lot of um, uh, forestry kind of worked out here. So that was one of the things I learned is, man, you've got to get your goods around the map in an expeditious manner. Learned a lot of other things about railways and uh, you want to see a traffic jam. The biggest traffic jam I have on this map is trains. Check this out. These trains are just sitting and they're going off map. There's nothing I can do out here. It's because of the way I designed my train delivery uh, at the beginning that got this all jacked up. So that's a shame. Again, one of the things I'll have to fix uh, in the next uh, go-around. And um, one of the things I learned is that if you put a train station in... See, one of my fears originally was um, all of your trains had to come from off-map, if you will. But what I found out is if you put in a train station, it will spawn its own trains. So, for instance, this train station right here 
connects to nothing off here and all it does is it's a little spur line that's an express line down into this little uh, rural train station here so th that goes nowhere and it's only connected to itself and it's in fact does uh, spawn trains and bring passengers and tourists and all kinds of stuff uh, back and forth so um, in my next build I will learn from that and make sure that all of my uh, transportation like uh, transit trains are all connected only to um, internally so they won't have any off map connections I'll have to have other connections to bring tourists and stuff in but uh, so that's one thing I learned I was I didn't know that I could do that at first so all of my tourists and my cargo trains are connected um, to external maps which is what causes those jams like you see over there uh, another thing I learned partway through this map check this out uh, <laughs> I thought every train track had to go over roads and then accidentally actually I found out that they do not have to they will actually create railroad crossings you can see this passenger train is uh, going across this and you see the <laughs> love it the little uh, train bars that are down here uh, so again that will go by and then these will come up and traffic can go through that's pretty freaking sweet so um, it is this game is just absolutely incredible let me let me uh, very quickly you know I could do really cool things if you go into let's see I sometimes love to just kind of do this just go into uh, ah, let's go into a city here let's zoom down to the street level here okay and I can't People move off fast, okay, which is why I have to stop. And let's just click on this guy right here. This is Howard Murray. Uh, he's a medium wealth adult. He's a tourist, and he's going to the small park. And eh, it's kind of boring. Let's find um, as an uneducated child. What are you doing out on the streets alone? I don't know what he's out on the streets alone for. Um, okay, so here's a highly educated adult. Um, and I'll show you some let me uh, okay let's click on this Rosemary Walker resides at the Applegate residence she's unemployed and she's going home so watch this I'm gonna do this one more time uh, before I leave you go this is the subway it's the transit and uh, so Rosemary apparently is gonna take the transit home so you you can't see her you can just see that I've I'm connected to her so she's down and she got on our subway train you can see that this train is now moving and gonna take Mary home or you know close to home it'll stop at a station here I don't know where her place of residence is uh, but you can see some other people get on and uh, she's continuing along this <laughs> so this is the transit uh, and I'll, I just think this is freaking awesome um, She's getting ready to pull into another station here. Um, sometimes passengers will make, um, will have to make uh, transitions to a different train. So, uh, in, and it'll become obvious it takes a little bit longer. Like they're just pulling the stations right here and uh, then going. Um, so I have no idea there must be a backup of trains underneath there because in fact I can tell if I go over here I should be able to see um, yeah in fact you can see this is the train that Rosemary's on you can see all these other trains that are down here um, I just lost Rosemary but anyway so you can see all these trains that are down here and they're running uh, passengers and so on and so forth I've just lost Rosemary but at any rate, you can follow <laughs> individual people wherever they're going around the city, whether they're going to business, they're going to a park, they're going to shop, they're going to... I uh, followed a guy on a motorcycle last night that came from off the map, and he was going to my sports stadium that's over there on the point. Um, so, again, I just watched him ride his motorcycle through the city. and uh, So it is freaking cool. Um, show you a couple things, and then I'm going to call it quits for this session. Here you have your info panels over here. So everything you need to know about your city, you'll see over here. So you're going to provide electricity. Uh, you can see that you know I'm running 
uh, electrical consumption is 852 megawatts, 851 megawatts, and I have a production of 1,100 plus uh, megawatts. And those blue tiles show you, um, that shows you when they're blue like this means that they're fully electrified. These are my plants, so I have all solar power right now. And you don't start with that. You have to get to the point where you, where you, um, you have those. So I have quite a few solar power plants. I also have a dam which produces... Um, this is a hydroelectric dam, so it produces uh, energy. These are incinerators, so I burn garbage and create energy from um, incinerators. So I have several of them around the city, so they produce very small amounts of electricity. In fact, uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, this is producing 10 megawatts of, of uh, energy right now, this one incinerator. But I have quite a few around the map. So you get electricity. You have water. Okay, again, here's uh, my water view, and you can see in these shaded blue areas, those are all my water lines running around the city, providing water to each of these uh, areas. And you have to extend um, these uh, lines when you expand your city. Uh, I will uh, thank and give a shout-out to Skystorm, uh, who has a great channel uh, on YouTube, and he does... Um, I picked this tip up from him, so... Uh, and if you, one other, when I'm building my next city, I'll talk a little bit more about what I picked up from him. Uh, it was a brilliant tip. But anyway, so you got to provide water for your city. Uh, there's your garbage pickups. Uh, so I've got incinerators. You've got, uh, back here I've got a, this is actually a trash, a landfill. Uh, so uh, then incinerators, I put landfills and incinerators around them uh, to, to burn the garbage as well. Uh, they all send out garbage trucks, so you can see when I click on this. Uh, this has 14 garbage trucks, and 13 of them are currently out picking up garbage. Incinerators um, actually have 25 garbage trucks, and this one's only using six of them right now to go out and pick up garbage. So you got garbage. Your education, I have a very highly educated city. 48% um, of my uh, work, my adults, are highly educated, well-educated, 28%. Not sure what the difference is, but so I've got elementary schools and high schools and two universities in Wordy Dirt. So I have a very highly educated um, citizenry. What I found with that is, is uh, that how you build your city depends on what kind of education you have. Uh, and I'll go more into that later. Here's the happiness of my citizens. Um, Overall, pretty dang happy. I'm working on this commercial app. This has come up a lot since I put in those uh, super speed highways there. Uh, the health of my citizens, um, pretty good, both in health care and death care. So you've got to bury your citizens. You've got to have a place to bury. And I have crematoriums around the city as well. So I'm good shape there. I'll kind of skip levels and uh, wind. This is really important, particularly early game when you're building it because you use uh, fa or wind farms uh, for early electricity. So now later game, I don't find the wind has been all that important. Then you've got your traffic. Uh, you can see with all the red areas, this is your high traffic areas. So I've actually cleared up a lot of mine. I have a, quite a bit down in here. So this is an area I need to look at in terms of traffic. Here's a fun one. There's pollution. Um, this is based around all the industrial sites, has pollution, uh, heavy industrial sites. These are all your, your uh, incinerators and your garbage dumps and your landfills and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you've got to watch your, produ your um, pollution. Here's noise pollution. Um, again, this is an important thing to keep... Uh, and to consider and really you want to insulate your residential areas from noise pollution because the citizens will get sick and then move out and blah 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 lots of different so you notice in my highly residential areas um, once I learn how to do this um, I try to keep the noise pollution um, out uh, this is another residential area over here as well so again noise pollution you have to take care of then you've got fire protection Okay, so you got, again, um, there's fires you got to be aware of. Buildings burn, houses burn, businesses burn. So you got to provide ample fire protection. 
police protection. I have a very low crime rate at 4%, which is exceptional. Uh, so I got lots of police coverage through the course of the building. Again, these blue buildings means they're very, very satisfied and comfortable with the police coverage. So I've got, and I've had from, from the beginning, very, very good. And you can see I am blue everywhere, all the way around. So I got plenty of police coverage. There's your public transits, uh, there's bus lines, there's the metro, which is your subway, there's the rail lines, and uh, those are the primary things that they're tracking with. Oh, and then you got boats, uh, and you got cargo, ships, and, and that kind of stuff. So all of those things are tracked in your, in your uh, transport tab. Then you get your citizens, okay? So you can look, I got 82,900 citizens. I've got uh, people employed, jobs available. I've got only a 5% unemployment rate, which is very good. Then you get your outside connections, a bunch of stuff there. Uh, land values, again, uh, these are this is very valuable property in here. You see the green is, is the more valuable. So you want your land values to be high. Uh, most of my city, as you can see, is, and it's not something I've worked on real hard, but um, I need to. I need to figure it out a little more. Most of mine is right in this blue to slightly greenish area. So could be worse, I suppose. Next is your natural resource tab. Again, you look at this and you see that this is ore. All the green is uh, forestry stuff. This yellow is, um, is good farming land. And then you've got this black, which right now is off map. Um, but this black that's down here is oil. Uh, originally, this was an oil-rich area, but I put an oil production uh, industrial area on top of it, and obviously it dries up in, for oil and ore, I noticed. Uh, it dries up the production, so I switched this out to just general industrial, and it actually works much better because I dried up all that stuff. Uh, these are your districts. You can see that I don't have a lot of districts, but I do have some districts, and you can specialize districts. You can uh, put special uh, laws into effect in certain districts and so on and so forth. It's pretty crazy. Uh, and then here's your leisure, or you have to provide some leisure um, parks, places for people to go and enjoy, um, you know, again, uh, enjoy their time off and again this this sky blue is they're very happy red is they're not very happy at all um, this is all business district here I'm really more most concerned about doing this in the residential areas but regardless you need to get better at doing this so that's a real quick walkthrough um, uh, here's my airport love my airport uh, it's fun again this brings in tourists it brings in cargo um, so you could deliver all of that um, to various places around the city so that will be that's a good intro uh, I suppose well good is up to you I guess but that's an intro anyways uh, my intro into city skyline an absolutely fascinating game that is very very sweet I learned an awful lot building this city up to nearly 83,000 citizens now uh, and I can't wait to apply some of that in uh, in my next go-round which will be probably brought to you in a YouTube series here so for now this is cross train from City Skylines and I uh, hope you enjoyed that leave a like leave a comment uh, I'm eating up YouTube uh, videos on this game just to try to figure out how to be more effective and efficient. So if you got any uh, thoughts or comments, love to hear them. Um, I respond to all my comments on my page, so feel free to leave one and love to have you like the video too. And uh, it doesn't really help the page. It just makes me know that people are watching it, I guess is the best reason to put it. It doesn't help me out because I don't commercialize my page. So, um, but anyways, uh, let me know what you think, and I uh, look forward to coming back to you from City Skyline again. And until next time, this is Cross Train from City Skyline, overlooking my airport. And I will see you next time. Until then, peace.